Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. Go to have a look at whether for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to the 6th of January. And we'll be able to excel out beyond that with the Excel GFS and ECM ensembles. Very much around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That will get us a well into the second half of January. And I shall get on with that for you in a moment, just say that first video today was the 6 a.m. Uh, upload. Uh, no um, ECM WF extended forecast UK and uh, Europe today. That was on the back burner this week. It will be back next week. Uh, we always scale things back a little bit, you know, from the additional videos during uh, Christmas week. So the uh, EC 30 day slash 42 day forecast UK. And for the rest of you, will return uh, next Tuesday. I hope you're having a lovely, lovely uh, bank holiday uh, Tuesday. It's the 27th of December. And this year, you know, that is bank holiday. Uh, so I hope you're having a lovely day, uh, everyone. Hope those turkey leftovers aren't dragging <laughs> too much. Um, right, OK, let's have a look at the uh, latest couple of forecasts for stratospheric temperatures at 10 HP. Won't do quite as much on the stratosphere today as we uh, did yesterday. But uh, just to bring you up to date with the two, uh, um, two of today's uh, GFS operational runs. So this is a midnight run. And the uh, GFS starting off on the 4th of January. So we're looking to see how much of a warming of a strategy we get. Quite a significant warming uh, taking place there by the 8th night of January over Siberia. Falls a little bit short of the level that I would class as a sudden stratospheric warming. But it does get reinforced later on by the 12th of January. Uh, so that is getting very close to reaching uh, SSW type temperature levels. Remember, there are other steps you have to go through to say that you having a SSW. SSW though, um, you have to move it into the pole. It does also uh, begin to propagate into the pole actually. Um, notably, a bit of displacement of the PV at its roots of these blue and purple curves is taking place by that point. Yeah, you also need to reverse the zonal wind and split the polar vortex. You know, this blue purple area needs to split into two. Um, so that is still short of a sun stratosphere one, but it does also it's going in that direction on the GFS midnight run. And then this is how the uh, 6Z is looking again, starting off on the 4th of January. Um, and again, quite a significant warming taking place over Siberia by the 8th of January, but this time doesn't develop uh, as much. So that gets to the 12th of January. So um, not as much of a uh, warming of the stratosphere at that point. So um, again, you know, just wait to see what happens with this. It sort of, certainly looks like there is going to be a significant warming of the stratosphere any time from around the 7th to the 12th of January, so into the second week of January. It looks like there's going to be significant warming of the stratosphere. Whether this gets to an SSW um, remains to be seen, and uh, let's see what happens. We'll be keeping an eye on it, of course, over the uh, next few days. This is going to be a big story, I think, uh, as we head into the new year. Right, this is how central temperature is currently looking. So the CT is now standing at uh, 2.6 degrees, which is just under 2 degrees below average. That is provisional to yesterday, to uh, Boxing Day. Uh, yesterday was a slightly cooler day, of course. Uh, the rest of the... Christmas New Year period looks relatively mild though, so I think we're going to see this going up into the freeze uh, in the end. It would be nice if we could keep it in the twos, wouldn't it? It's been a long time since we had a December CT in the twos. Um, but uh, I think we're just going to be short of that. But we shall see. Anyway, we've only got a few more days to uh, wait and see where we land up with that. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. Looking at Birmingham today, so the red line is on the 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham with zonal at moment up and down. So, got a warmer sector coming through today, bringing milder, wetter, and windier weather that will last into tomorrow as well. Then for Thursday, we go cooler, but we're back to uh, milder uh, conditions again. Um, on uh, Friday towards the new year into the beginning of the new year. It goes a little bit cooler again. And then we lose the zonal sine wave and uh, we lift the upper air temperatures up through that first week, second week of January, becoming very mild, uh, potentially. Um, then with the uh, white lines, which is what I'm mean, 
<coughs> and that is the main line of uh, all the ensemble members. That goes significantly above the long-term 30-year average trip change. Why well, lots of trip change to come over the uh, next few days at Birmingham as well into the new year. Bit of a dry trend, though, I think, through the first week of January. So, um, might turn a bit drier as, as temperature is such a high pressure is likely to be building up from the south and from the southwest with that. Um, maybe wetter again by the second week of January, but of course, that is a long way off and it's very extended range. You can see the increase in uh, pressure here. So, we're starting off with low pressure at the moment into the new year but uh, through that first week of January pressure rising uh, up to between 1020 and 1030 millibars snow row for Birmingham looks like that pretty grim um, it has to be said not much sign of snow for Brum in the uh, next couple of weeks we have got a couple of um, quite large uh, snow spikes there around the new year um, but obviously they are outlier members uh, and then beyond that maybe a few into the second week of January but again uh, that's a long way off and, and, and there aren't that many of them so I think we're going to be struggling for snow uh, in Birmingham for the next couple of weeks. Temperature anomalies from the 27th of December, 4th of January, mild of an average for England and Wales. Still a little bit below average for Scotland, though. Uh, so it's still quite cold there. It's been snowy again across uh, large portions of Scotland um, uh, overnight and previous morning. It is turning mild uh, now with the uh, snow turning back towards rain. But um, it may be quite wintry up in the northern part of the country. But otherwise, Ireland, England, Wales, relatively mild. And precipitation anomalies from the 27th and 7th, 4th of January wetter than normal. The latest wind play back from Earth, Nordschool.net, shows that we're bringing a southwesterly wind today. We have a low pressure dominating in the Atlantic, various low pressure centres, and uh, bringing up the air from the uh, Azores. So it is still just about hanging on to the cold air because of the far. <coughs> I'm so sorry once again, everybody across the far north of Scotland, but otherwise these uh, milder winds are advancing in from off the Atlantic. Right, well, let's start going through chart data then. So here we go for big night on Friday, and we've got low pressure off the coast of Norway, more low pressure waiting for winds here. And it's actually a little bit of transient ridge bringing slightly dry weather for midnight on Friday, but by uh, New Year's Eve, midnight, <laughs> the clearing of low pressure breaking through, bringing more bouts of wind and rain into the new year. That's New Year's Day, as Big Ben's chiming, and uh, that looks quite unsettled too. And then uh, beyond that, into the opening day to January, more low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic Ocean. Trying to raise pressure a little bit to our south and east, but really it's this low in the Atlantic that is the dominating factor. And then Icon uh, looks like that too. So again, low pressure bringing further spells of uh, rain at the end of week and into the weekend uh, as well. So plenty of wet windy waves to come around the new year. After that, into the early part of next week, we just begin to raise heights a little bit. The country starts sending these areas of low pressure slightly further northwest for the early part of next week, so becoming a little bit drier there. Um, oh, next week, and probably a little bit cooler as well, perhaps cold enough for some overnight frost. The GFS midnight run again showing low pressure in from off the Atlantic, that's bringing further bouts of rain with it. Notice for New Year's Eve, quite cold air is into Scotland, so as it's low comes in up against that cold air on New Year's Eve. There might be some snow in the north. Meanwhile, further south, we are just looking at cold rain. That's New Year's Day, a stronger portion of southwesterlies for New Year's Day, with more wet and windy weather likely into the early part of next week. Again, the low pressure just eases off the gas slightly, so it turns a bit drier in the early part of uh, next week as heights rise both to our south and east. So, but by day 10, actually, we've got quite a nice ridge of high pressure to our east Ridging into the country. That could well bring the groove some too, sir. That could well bring us a little bit of frost and fog if that comes off into the second half of uh, next week. Quite quickly, that uh, high pressure is slipping away into uh, in towards the Ukraine and southwestern Russia, low pressure deepening in the Atlantic, and that starts to bring up a very mild southerly wind then. So uh, the frost and fog scenario only, only lasts a couple of days and then we're into those mild potentially very mild uh, southerly winds so that takes us through 
to the second week of January as well, looking at mild and rather unsettled there by the 12th of January. The GFS 6Z uh, looks like that, so further areas of road pressure and bouts will bring the rain uh, through the end of week, through the New Year period. That looks quite stormy for New Year's Day, that 6am New Year's Day, deep area of road pressure, bringing heavy rain and strong winds with it. Uh, moving into the middle and second half of next week, high pressure again building to our south and east. That turns things a little bit drier through uh, the middle and second half of next week. Not as much fro uh, fro uh, not as much fog and frost. Then he said frog and frost. Uh, not as much fog and frost potential with that second half of next week because high pressure, you know, is slightly more towards our south southeast. So we're still dragging up like a southerly. Southwesterly there, um, really. Uh, and then in the external range, we just go back into unsettled, quite stormy weather again, actually. So that's the 12th of January as well as we get to low pressure again, bringing another bout of wind and rain in from off the Atlantic. If you enjoyed the video, please you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And uh, why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. GM, again, with below pressure coming in off the Atlantic on Friday into Saturday and Sunday. Today's unsettled uh, through to the early part of next week. Mild, very mild, actually. Southwesterly winds, a little bit drier for the south, still really unsettled up in the north. And uh, that's day 10, 6th of January, looking very mild and unsettled in the north then. And then the ECM at WF rounding it all off. So that is New Year's Eve. So it's slightly cold there coming into the north on New Year's Eve. Wet in the uh, south. Uh, that's New Year's Day to 2nd of January. So a little bit colder, I think, with the ECM scenario today. Keep snow potential in the north. Cold rain down in the south. Uh, moving up towards day 10, we start to get high pressure building to our east and a little bit to our northeast actually. So uh, by day 10, 6th of January, we've almost got a Scandi high going on. So a Baltic Sea high going. So it's centred around the Baltic states of like Latvia, uh, Estonia, that sort of area. Um, it's enough to start bringing wind into more of a southeasterly. Anyway, so probably turning a little bit colder the second half of next week again there will be some uh, uh, frost and fog fog and frost gruesome toothsome let's call it that i can't get my words out very good today we'll be a little bit of gruesome toothsome potential uh at uh, day 10 uh with that and i say not that far away from getting the scanning high going there with the uh ecm this is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tibetio.com. So snow across uh, Scotland today. Otherwise, plenty of rain coming in from off the Atlantic. And uh, then overnight, well, uh, the first batch of rain clears away. More wet weather waiting in the wings. That sweeps across the country tomorrow, giving us another soaking uh, into uh, Thursday. Sunshine and showers. So first shout wintry. Up in the north, Friday, well, yes, you've got uh, yet another batch of heavy rain sweeping across the country. Some snow uh, for Scotland with that. That's New Year's Eve, more towards snow, you'll notice, for Scotland. Meanwhile, further south, yes, the rain, <laughs> the rain goes on. That's New Year's Day, that's midnight, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Thoroughly wet across England and Wales with torrential rain. Uh, dry and probably a bit cold further north, might even be a romantic frost there. Uh, for Hogmanay. And some of that uh, wet weather does turn to snow across northern England, actually, early in the early hours of um, New Year's Day. Uh, and then a more widespread snow risk for New Year's Day across Scotland, just about into northern parts of Ireland. And uh, they're going to be dry for a couple of days as that high pressure begins to build out to our east and uh, and our northeast wet weather restricted to the far northwest of the country by then. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. Gets us to the 6th of January from the Icelandic Met Office. 30 members of the ECM ensembles keep it mild uh, for day 10 with high pressure over France and low pressure around Iceland. That brings up a southwest wind. So we'll be dry with that, but also will be very mild. And then 21, including the control. And the operation run has that high pressure further north, low pressure further away from us. And uh, that's a rather colder scenario as we bring in the wind from more of a southeasterly 
direction. So the idea at Daytown from the ECM operation run, that idea not that well supported actually by the ECM on some of that. It's like a minority uh, option within the uh, ECM ensembles there, the majority option. 30 of them is, uh, is is dry, yes, but also milder. In two weeks' time, uh, these are the options that we've got. So we have, this is the 11th of January, by the way, we have 23 members of the ECM ensembles, more or less with a Scandinavian high by then, and uh, probably bringing in a cold easterly, certainly south easy, but maybe easterly flow. 15 with low pressure dominating from off your eyes, that's unsettled and uh, rather wet and also mild, of course. And then 13 just here has high pressure ridging through the country, but it's going northward, so that also not far from turning us colder. So I think things are going to get more interesting as we go into the middle and second half of January. Go away to what the first half of January uh, looks mild. I think, but I don't, I don't think winter's not done here yet, even if we don't get this SSW, I still think the second half of January could uh, yield some cold weather, I don't think this winter is done, so let's wait and see. CMS region, finally, these are 500 millibar high denoise breaking down into wheat pits, the first wheat pit takes from the 27th of December to the 2nd of January, the coming week has high pressure to the south and low pressure to the north, and we bring up a very mild uh, southwesterly wind with that week uh, week two. It's going to be the third to the ninth of January with high pressure uh, over and to the east of the country. That brings a lot of dry weather with it. Maybe a little bit cooler with that, but yeah, it's coming in more from the continent with that. So uh, it could it could be very mild. But um, if we start getting the, like a continental flow going, then we can get some frost and fog going. And the same is probably true for uh, week three. So if we to the 16th of January, the high pressure band centred like low countries, Germany. Um, no, the, the mildest where with that is probably going up here. And that's probably high pressure probably centred closer to us to again give us a risk of some overnight frost and fog. And then uh, week four, that by far has, has the greatest cold potential. It's the 17th to 23rd of January. The high pressure it goes north again. Uh, so the high pressure ridging from the North Atlantic into Iceland and uh, back into the Arctic. That will pull wind into a much colder north or northeasterly. And we will go off and running then into a significantly colder spell of weather if that came off. Of course, that's four weeks away, so it is a long way out. Right, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, then please do like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Web. Well, it's amazing. It's incredible. We thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that for us. Right, so that is it, then, for uh, today's videos. Just to tell you what's coming up tomorrow, uh, we're going to have the 6M upload, and there'll be a 10 to 14 days as well. I think you're going to live stream uh, that. So I'm going to try and do... Uh, a live stream uh, tomorrow. That will be at 6 p.m. in the evening. It'd be nice to check in, you know, wouldn't it? At least once between Christmas and uh, and the New Year. So, uh, live stream with a 10 to 14 day uh, tomorrow at 6 p.m. At 6 a.m. We'll have a 6 a.m. forecast. No USA forecast uh, this week. Again, all the additions, you know, I kind of ease off on them through the Christmas week to give myself a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a break. Uh, but uh, still keeping the main content uh, going. Right, so I shall see you live tomorrow, perhaps at 6pm. Um, but for this video, that's all for now. Enjoy the rest of your bank holiday Tuesday and uh, more tomorrow. That's it for this one. Bye for now.